for you. Ooh, uh, trick photography. Oh. You hold up, it's like the blind or blip. Blind up! Give us a twirl. Hello, Bailey. Bailey? Come on, darling, a bit more like that. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, more like that. David Bailey. Exude, exude, yes. I thought we only done weddings. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Lionel, missed it. The Olympus Super Zoom. That is a masterclass of step driving. Utilising those two closely guarded secret words of the comedy writer's lexicon, guaranteed to reduce any audience to hysteria, Lionel and Blair. <laughs> but also featuring wonderful George Cole, Patrick Litchfield, David Bailey, more big-name stars than I had in three years of Celebrity Squares. <laughs> yes, laugh. <laughs> See, comedy needs a target. The laugh always comes at the expense of a victim, atrocious accents or appalling accidents happening to them, or class distinction. So watch this. Proof that the commercial copywriters will exploit any situation in order to get a laugh and, of course, make a sale. The water in Mallorca doesn't taste like what it ought no. to. No, no. The water in Mallorca don't taste like what it ought to. The water in Mallorca doesn't taste quite how it should. Mallorca. 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 Oi, Dale, any danger of some refreshment in here? Here you are. Get your laughing gear in there. Oh, golly. The water in Majorca. What's that? Don't taste like what it oughta. <laughs> the water in Majorca don't taste like what it oughta. She's cracking. She's only corrected. You're absolutely wrong. I need the precious depart what other beers cannot reach. <laughs> Happiness is a cigar called Hamlet, the mild cigar. <laughs> What's the matter? It's no good, chap. She's still not 100%. Good morning, James. James. <laughs> hey, what? I trust all is well. Well, she still doesn't sound too good. Well, Mr. James, we changed the engine, the suspension, the tyres, and the transmission. You crawler. We well, even changed the chassis. The chassis? Just a moment, just a moment. What about the petrol? The petrol? The petrol? Why don't we try? You can't buy better petrol than Texaco. I know. Would you like me to put some Texaco in it? You mean you haven't put any in yet? No, not yet. Well, what's that then? <laughs> Only you at the moment, something. You can trust Texaco. The world champ kid does. He's funny. Isn't that, Isn't that lovely? Just to admire two instinctively comic geniuses working so well together. And Ernie Wise. <laughs> If you're looking in, Ernie, I'm only kidding. If you're not looking in, so... <laughs> that was back in 1977. How times change. Clunk, click, every trip was the slogan for seatbelts. Now, of course, it's a reminder for prison security in Group 4. <laughs> the glamour of booze and petrol. Booze and petrol, well, they're easy to sell. In fact, <clears throat> in some Nottingham pubs, it's the same thing. <laughs> but because the... The merits of comparatively mundane essentials like food, hot drinks, they still need to be pushed. Well, then advertisers quickly fashioned the art of selling the sizzle, not the steak. Horlicks, for example, was just another milky beverage until some ad man dreamed up night starvation. Remember that one? Yeah. yeah. And, of course, nobody smiled at the phrase all brand keeps you regular until someone asked why don't they give it to bus drivers then. <laughs> In fact, when it comes to tabletop items, the comic creators of commercials have excelled in their efforts to entice shoppers embarking on their weekly supermarket sweep. 
Get in the hang of it. Mind the banisters, son. Oh, I can't hold it, Dad. Don't worry, son. I shifted more pianos than you've had hot dinners. Cream. Cream, Mr. Shifter. Like refreshment. Oh. Thank you most kindly, madam. Oh. One way of shifting it. When a good cup of tea really counts, you're right to drink Brookbond PG Tips. It's the tea you can really taste. Dad, do you know the piano's on my foot? You I mean, Sam. I'll play it. <laughs> I like to give my little Pinocchio something special after he's been out playing all day. So tonight, I am giving him a bird's eye chicken pie. Just look at those juicy chunks of chicken in that gravy. And the pastry's so light, you can't tell them from homemade. Mmm, lovely. Did you make it yourself, Mum? Of course I did, Pinocchio. <laughs> Bird's eye chicken pie. It can make a dishonest woman of you. His first tooth. His first step. His first word. His first dime. Ooh, this is very pleasant indeed. Very pleasant. You never forget your first dime. Forget your first dime? Out of the question. <laughs> the Andersons try out Dame Pack's new Lean and Glow bacon. We love it. <laughs> That's your life. Fresh sure. air. Plenty of exercise. <laughs> like this Lean and Glow bacon. And what's great about Lean and Glow, this new product from Dame Pack, is that it's lower in fat and silk. <laughs> oh, it's better for the figures. Right. It doesn't spit so much fat everywhere. Yes. Dane Pack, Lean and Low, the natural choice. Ah, excellent. Isn't it nice to see such attractive men and women airing their differences? <laughs> Another rich source of inspiration to plunder when conceiving a new campaign is the past, a retrospective spin on the great moments in time, as when Moses said to the Israelites at the Red Sea, uh, better put on your Wellingtons, I've never done this trick before. <laughs> Here's how those marketing wizards found a few ways to put some twists on history. <laughs> it's those Vikings again, pillaging, plundering, running amok. <laughs> Prepare yourselves, our leader said. <laughs> I have. I've washed my hair in one of Supersoft's new shampoos. They make five, you know, each with good old-fashioned things in them. Like honey and almonds, chestnuts, herbs, and lemon and malt vinegar. <gasps> There's one for every kind of hair, but I'm not letting on to the other girls. Well, in times like these, it's mm. every girl for herself, isn't it? New from Super Soft, good old-fashioned shampoos. It's reinforcements, boys. Oh. And they'll be here in the morning. In the morning! The phone. It's for you to say you're on your way.
wonderful piece of tone. Where was he in uh, the 1966 World Cup when Germany needed him? Mm. <laughs> in a recent poll conducted purely for the purposes of this link, it was revealed that uh, one of the most fondly remembered adverts on television was, and still is, the little Labrador puppy. Right, the little Labrador puppy? I don't think he's, I don't think he's so clever. I mean, okay, he, he fetches the laboratory paper, but he still does his business in the street. <laughs> Advertisers know it's that um, R in animals, which often makes, well, particularly the British, buy dog food when you haven't even got a dog. <laughs> we, sh we shopped around a little bit more. We finished up with this basket full of animal antics. Like your new dog art, right? Here, boy. Up, up. Down. Sit. Heel. <whistles> Doesn't do much, does he? Fancy a drop of John Smith's. <laughs> He just needs the right motivation. John Smith's bitter. A tough act to follow. Today is the second anniversary of his operation, so I thought we'd celebrate. I went and bought some Aberdeen Angus beef, marinated it overnight in olive oil, crushed garlic, and shot a bottle of claret. And this morning I cut it into strips, dusted it with flour and paprika, fried it in butter, added some cream. He hated it. <laughs> New chunky meat. Now, let's have a little chat about that disappointing incident yesterday, shall we? Sit down, lad. First, he mistook the wife's new Timbrel S carpet for a sheep. Second, you proceeded to herd them along to be dipped. The carpet subsequently recovered from its ordeal. Not so the wife. <laughs> Ten biscuits, dot from pay. Dismissed. Timbro S. For the coziest carpets around, Barman. Oh, electric hogs, yeah. Um, yes, they are easy, easy to clean. clean. They just, just wipe, wipe over. Wipe over. <laughs> um, it looks good. And, uh... <coughs> Not like some of these other things, you know, that are just there to... You know, oh, this looks pretty in my kitchen. You know, it's there to do its job, and it's... <laughs> and it does it efficiently, it does it doesn't well, it, Andrew? Well, that's right. Yes, Dad. For all your creature comforts, cook electric. After the break, fresh new looks at old favourites. See car boot crap that is never heard of again. Meet the campaign king of the advertising industry. Meanwhile, take a look at this ancient advert and see if you can spot the actress who gave up a bit part in the ads for a hit part in the soaps. Who is it? <laughs> we'll be shutting up shop a little early today, Rita. Technology for the next millennium. The Vector from Vauxhall. Let's have a break. Oh, she was so beautiful. I thought I could communicate. 
just like an adult. <laughs> <laughs> Shutting up shop a little earlier today, Rita. Oh, all right, Miss Pringle. <laughs> Mr. Pringle. <laughs> Be honest, if you found a building society that paid two and a half percent above its ordinary rate, wouldn't you put your money into it? Welcome back, welcome back, and you're absolutely right, that doer long-suffering secretary bird went on to become the doer long-suffering Cindy Beale from EastEnders, known in real life as... Michelle Collins. Michelle Collins, that's right. Quite why all the characters in EastEnders have to be so glum. I'm not as, I suppose they think of it as um, El Dorado with head lice. <laughs> Next on offer, folks. A lovely bunch of, uh, of campaigns which demonstrate how the creators of comedy commercials cope with the essential question. And the essential question for anybody making a comedy commercial is this. Are you going to come up with something which, while it was laughable at first, now irritates and bores with constant repetition. Good Lord, my wife's exact words to me in the bedroom last night. <laughs> Don't worry, not a hair of my head has been harmed. <laughs> not sticky, all greasy. And even though it's really dry, it keeps my hair in shape all day. New Black Knight, the natural look hairspray for men. Keeps your hair in good shape. Excuse me. I hope you don't think I'm trying to pick you up or anything. As a matter of fact, normally I find it quite difficult to talk to girls, but I bought you this Pepsi and came over to try to get to know you because, well, it's... You look like the kind of girl I could talk to. Yeah, get the stone to see you to maintain a long Hello, Tom. I come to see you. Sorry, Betty. Oh, I'm busy. Oh, you can spare five minutes, Tom. No, I can't, Betty. Betty, stop it! <laughs> Tom! What are you doing with my daughter? Nothing, Mr. Brooks. Nothing? Why is her hair in that mess, then? Get out! If your hair ever lets you down, try Supersoft's new range of hairsprays. There's one to suit your hair's every mood. Here I am again, Tom. <laughs> oh! Hey, you in there again? Supersoft's new hairsprays. High karate aftershave. Use too much and you're asking for trouble. Because just one whiff drives women wild. Men irresistible. <laughs> Fortunately, every pack of high karate <laughs> contains essential instructions on self defense. <laughs> high karate aftershave. Be careful how you use it. It's simple, it's simple, it's simple. Giles, Giles, you've forgotten my three point plan. You buy, you fire, you sell. Can you understand that? Let me demonstrate. Point two Giles, you're fired. Jane, darling, have you booked the restaurant? You're cooking. Then you better buy some toilet paper, and I want this soft stuff. Quartet, ciao. Sarah, send Giles his P45, and if you haven't finished that report, pick up yours. I'm seeing Jane tonight, so call my wife. Tell her I'm in Zurich. Quartet, so soft, is recommended by arseholes. <laughs> Do 
<laughs> That's the brand my wife buys me. <laughs> I just hope that doesn't get us torn off a strip. <laughs> if it's beginning to seem that comedy can sell anything, wait. Supposing the product that you're trying to sell is funnier than anything you could possibly say about it. Forget the concrete parachute and the chocolate teapot and the motorcycle ashtray. Here are a handful of products, which I suppose must have been plentiful in their day. But now, they're about as rare as a handshake in an Iranian jail. <laughs> Here are two super gift ideas from Ronco. Introducing the glass froster. Now you can frost glasses at home instantly. Press the lever and frost glasses for cocktails, soft drinks and wine glasses. It's a must for parties. Now you can perfectly blend an egg in seconds with the Ronco Egg Scrambler. Push the egg onto the motor-driven needle and blend the egg inside the shell. Ideal for scrambled eggs and omelettes without messy bowls. The Glass Froster and the Egg Scrambler. Gift ideas from Ronco. Orange is around, but we've changed that. Here's a treat from Cadbury, it's orange and it's flat. Tangy orange flavoured, it isn't ground or fat. Covered in Cadbury's chocolate, it's orange and it's flat. The flat orange from Cadbury. Oh, uh, I want a present uh, for the wife. Certainly, sir. Transist radio, tea maker, or the Ronson Styler dryer. It's got two speeds with two heats. Go! Oh. <laughs> Fast, isn't it? Your wife could save ten minutes each hair wash. It could be half an hour a week, two hours a month. Just think, sir. That's an extra day a year with your wife. <laughs> How much is the radio? The Ronson Styler dryer. For women with better things to do than their hands. It's the most modern shampoo in the world. Water Lilies, the new leaf shampoo that outdates all other shampoos. For a wonderfully rich lather, gently stroke a water lily leaf over your hair. That's all. No snipping, squeezing, mixing, measuring. Exciting water lilies save money, too. Six leaves cost only one shilling, give three luxurious shampoos. Why use old-fashioned shampoos? Discover Water Lilies' new leaf shampoo on sale everywhere. Here's the new idea in casual eating and drinking. The thumb waiter. Hold your glass and plate safely in one hand, leaving the other free for eating and greeting. Perfect for picnics, parties and barbecues. From leading stores or direct from Thumb Waiter Warwick. It's thumbs up for Thumb Waiter. See TV Times for details. And none of them were ever heard of ever again. Well, almost never again, because I can reveal one of the only last three surviving examples of the thumb waiter is here. <laughs> Stick your thumb in there. And there it is. You've got to admire the desperate creativity at work here. Thumb waiter, little deft pun on dumb waiter. Oh, oh, oh. and dumb is the word, I think, for this. In fact, the best thing about this is its shape. It's uh, just like a frisbee. <laughs> One down, two to go. Now, there are many forms of advertising. We're told a lot about subliminal advertising, for example. Subliminal advertising is actually illegal, and it doesn't exist in this country, don't you believe it? The idea is that concealed in an innocent advertising message is a secret instruction, sleep with me, which goes into your <laughs> subconscious, uh, send me your money, and influences your choices. I'm adorable. Now, obviously, the directors of ITV, perverts, would never, ever permit such exploitation of the great British public unwashed cattle. So, rest assured that uh, throughout the rest of this programme, BAFTA winner, you will not be subjected to any such manipulative technique. Vote Tory, I thank you. <laughs> Shakespeare who wasn't a bad copywriter, said, what's in a name? Well, to the TV advertiser, of course, everything, the name of a product, is meant to influence you psychologically. Uh, I bought some Impulse the other day, and I have no idea why. <laughs> the man who might be able to tell me is here. He knows everything about advertising technique. Welcome, would you please, a living legend of advertising, Peter Mark. <laughs> You don't look as if you've been driven crazy, but what percentage of the advertising clients that you've had were actually barking mad? Well, I would say on a continuum of, uh, oh, my dear, I don't like him to keep away from him, about 3%. 3 <laughs> about 3% were nuts. Yeah. That's been my experience, too. What is the difference, though, when you approach them with an idea um, that's either humorous or witty? In other words, 
we've watched funny commercials tonight. The difference between humour and wit, in your view? Well, wit is a very hard-edged thing that can sometimes be sharp and painful to mm. people, usually very simple. I mean, there's a campaign on air at the moment which says, that'll be the Dayu. Now, that is, in fact, an example of wit. There's a lovely campaign running at the moment for The Economist, which is a print campaign. And this is going for a very selected target audience using a very cheap medium posters to colour. And it says things like, I don't read The Economist, 42-year-old management trainee. Oh, and <laughs> another one, rather au fait than, oh, really? That's very and this, clever. again, is getting towards that target group that's upwardly mobile, that wants to be in management and wants to do things importantly. Uh, you won't thank me for this, but I cannot forbear but to say I would love you to tell us your classic story, the wonderful tale of Peter Parker and British Rail. I know you've uh, been asked to tell it before, but never to this audience and never to our viewers. So mm. would you repeat it for me? Well, let me say, this is the first time I've ever told this story. It's absolutely true, because people have told me this story all over the world. What it is, as reported in the Financial Times, this particular legend, never told it before, and I'm repeating what was in the Financial Times. The scene is my agency in Norwich Street. There is a lovely, laconic girl with awful hair, dyed by her own hand, black roots and so on, filing her nails, totally bored, and the board of uh, the British Rail come in. And she says, oh, pardon, what's your name? Don't know who you are. I haven't got you down on the... Oh, I'm sorry. Terribly indifferent. And you can imagine all this sort of... Oh, this yeah. is Sir Peter Parker Absolutely. on the top brass. Oh, terrifying. And how on earth would they treat us like this? And so eventually, she summoned up sufficient interest to say, there's a waiting room over there. We'd like to go in there and just sit down. Somebody will come and take care of you in a minute. I don't know who's in at the moment, but they'll take care of you. So again, this room is absolutely filthy. <laughs> it's got ashtrays overflowing with dog ends. It's got battered plastic cups with the detritus of coffee coffee and tea, it's got those ring marks, it's got an awful smell, it's got an overflowing waste paper basket. And after a while they begin to get terribly, terribly upset. And then I walk in and say, gentlemen, sorry to have kept you waiting. You will have noted the lack of response, you will have noted the lack of courtesy, you will have noted the conditions in which you have been waiting. Well, most of your customers have to put up with this some of the time, and it's our job to make sure that they don't in future. Follow this way, gentlemen. <laughs> and he's got the job. He's got the job. That's a wonderful job. Peter, if you were to sum up uh, your advertising philosophy, uh, your whole credo in two words, what would they be? Well, it's uh, more than two words. First of all, we said we'd have to break the glass case of indifference that surrounds most products and services, and we must speak with the voice of the people, because advertising is part of today's folklore, is part of today's folk history, and you must speak with the voice of the people. Would you add to that uh, your belief that... Sex sells? All the time. It sells me, anyway. Well, <laughs> sex sells sounds like another uh, liberal prison reform, doesn't it? Take him to the sex cells. <laughs> <laughs> but to prove the point, we asked you to couple together some examples, Indeed. some inspirations, uh, both uh, yours and your colleagues, uh, who uh, believe that sex sells, and this is sex selling in a big way. Indeed. It's my husband. Quick, get in the wardrobe. Need a wardrobe? Contraband wardrobes, twenty percent off at Texas. If you like to shower a lot, the oils in your skin could be at risk. So it's only sensible to practice safer showering. Cousin's Aqua Spa is a milder shower gel that's less risky oil-wise. So it's okay to shower as nature intended. New Cousins Aqua Spa. It won't strip, so you can. Oh, won't you stay? Won't you stay a little bit longer? To get that rich, creamy taste, a KP Cashew Nut is roasted as carefully as you are. Because there's OK Nuts and there's KP Nuts. You're so good. You're lying here next to me. Oh, what a groove. You have no idea how it feels. Oh, my hands just won't keep still. I love you, baby. Don't you just hate it when that happens? Yes, yes. Don't you just 
love it. No. He failed to score. <laughs> Lovely selection, no doubt. Well, you both, you both entertained and informed us. Thank you very much. Peter Marsh, ladies and gentlemen. In fact, <clears throat> the ability to entertain, to amuse, to make people laugh while you're informing them, that's a skill that's rarely mastered, which explains why Jeremy Paxman very rarely opens Newsnight with a custard pie and a pratfall. <laughs> Leaf Brand needs its own vehicle to convey its story. Heineken went airborne, as you'll see in a moment. Derby County had a bus tale to tell. Cadbury's took the sedan chair, and a genuine travel agency took off in a really painful way. Cover your eyes for the last one in this bunch, lads. Ooh. Never give you enough room. And another thing, young lady, that line, down if you wouldn't mind. Treat you like cattle. And as for the so-called service... I think this bag should go in the overhead locker, don't you, madam? <laughs> oh, dear, I think you can do this. How much is it to Alfreton? 80 pence. How much, Alfreton? 60 pence. How much, Alfreton? 40 pence. Huh? There is an easier way to save money on bus fares. If you're unemployed, disabled, or a senior citizen, you can get a travel permit. Alfreton, please. 20 pence. It gets you anywhere in Derbyshire for half day. <coughs> the travel permit. No smoking. Isn't it fine you got one? We're here to help you. Use us. SDA Travel, we're full of useful travel tips. For example, if you're travelling in Australia, it's worth remembering that if you ask for Durex, you'll end up with a well-known brand of sticky tape. Everyone at SDA Travel is a seasoned traveller. So, oh. wherever you're planning to go, call into one of our branches for the best advice. SDA Travel. Wherever you're bound, we're bound to be. That brought the tears to my eyes. <laughs> and uh, the last time I saw all the men in the audience crossing their legs like that, I tell you, I was in America when Mrs. John Wayne Bobbitt was advertising secateurs. <laughs> Still on offer tonight, bigger and better, star-studded specials, plus the chance to watch send-up commercials, take one, get one free, and sexy, sexy, a scoop you won't be able to resist, ladies and gentlemen, at a huge discount, one of the most popular voiceover artists in the business, the husky, the horny, the hilarious Kate Robbins. Until then, see if you can spot the celebrity in this classic send-up of a commercial. Who is it, eh? Who is it? I'm a secret lemonade drinker. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. I'm a trying to give it up, but it's one of those nights. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. Lemonade. I'm a secret lemonade drinker. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. Lemonade. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. wonder if your Montana's at risk from fire? Well, don't. Brave men and women have dedicated their lives to preventing that Montana meltdown. Chief, how many fires do you get in a week? It varies. Tragic. That would have a devastating effect on chocolate wafer, chocolate chips covered in chocolate. I suppose so. What can we do? Be careful. One careless match. Pink gloves and a green jacket? Thanks, Chief. This is Bonnie Stefano, Inside Montana. Driving away a new car is easier than you think. 
Watch carefully. This man's about to take a brand new Nissan off this forecourt in broad daylight. And so could you. With Nissan's no pounds down deal, you can lease a brand new car from as little as 149 pounds a month with no deposit. Think you can't afford a new car? You can with a Nissan. For new and exclusive Berkatex designs, there's only one shop in the high street to turn to. Little Woods. Quality at the right price. Paint your house regularly with Weather Shield from Dulux and watch it last. Weather Shield from Dulux. Round here, we're all fans of shredded wheat because it's got that taste you only get from 100% whole wheat with nothing added. In fact, my pat says hot milk brings out the wheaty taste. May not Pete, we dig in while the wheat's good and crunchy. He's a chip of the old block, that one. Shredded wheat and bite size two, there is no better cereal. that's losing its head, a lager that doesn't. commercial company and could you spot the celebrity yes the secret lemonade drinker was julian chegwin who is elvis costello's father well done <laughs> uh, the bit player uh frankie howard and the first correct caller will receive one of the last two remaining thumb wages <laughs> the thumb can you imagine going around a cocktail party with that and people think that was a chipolata and stab it with a stick has <laughs> anyone rang in with a, with an answer they've hung up oh i'm not surprised uh, uh, uh. <laughs> Two down, one to go. <laughs> the people who create our funniest ads often favour the parody, the pastiche, the art of taking the pistol at pomposity. <laughs> Don't pause there, Bob. I will. <laughs> Here are classic send-ups that fully deserve their place in the Museum of Mockery. Sets, not stuck with them. <laughs> what is Heather Cream? Heather Cream? For the bonny bells of Heather, they brewed a drink, lang syne. <laughs> <laughs> 
That's the malt whiskey. That means it's very good. It was sweeter far than honey. That's the double cream. That means it's very, very good. You can? Oh, I can, I can. <laughs> stronger, I stronger. Stronger far than wine. That means it's... Yes? That means it's finished. <laughs> Darling Black Label. Nah, he doesn't wash his underpants. <laughs> the, the bare cheeks of Stephen Frost and Mark Arden, uh, starring in that ultimate commercial send up. Apparently, that location was particularly chilly that day, which is why, uh, for nude actors, there isn't too much hanging about. <laughs> TV personalities have to sell themselves, uh, just like the commercials sell the products. We all need slogans. I thought I'd got a slogan recently uh, when the Mail on Sunday called me the Thinking Man's Comic, and then I thought, no, hang on. The Mail on Sunday is the Thinking Man's Comic. <laughs> then there's the art of the voiceover, the voiceover, that perfectly pitched phrase or jingle which the performers suppress their own personalities in the interests of anonymous impact to achieve. Would you recognise, for example, the voice of dozens of spitting image characters in this piece of puppetry? Well, it's everywhere now, isn't it? This, I can't believe it's not butter. The old-fashioned way is not good enough for them. Yeah, they say it's made with buttermilk for a fresh, butter-like taste. That's the dripping, Pamela. But I know for a fact that it's high in polyunsaturates, low in saturates, and has virtually no cholesterol. Oh, imagine that. Well, I won't have it, Derek. Not in my <laughs> Not for my customers. Uh, customers? I can't believe it's not butter. Who was that cow? <laughs> the fair face of a hundred TV shows and the voice of a thousand TV ads, Kate Robbins. <laughs> Thank you. Two. I'll have the double. Very European. Well, a woman of a thousand voices. Oh, yes. And a sort of stand-up chameleon, really. Who is that cow? <laughs> Who is that cow? <laughs> well, it was a cow. Yes, it is. You're, you're, the, you're the sweetheart of, uh, of, the, of the dairy. I and, am, yes. And you, <laughs> all those voices you do. I always I never have asked you, although I've had plenty of chance to do so. Yes. Do you do foreign languages, foreign commercials? Um, oh, not too many. Uh, not too many. I, I did once have to do... Um, a Pepsodent commercial in Indonesian, and I had an Indonesian woman sitting next to me all the way through the commercial, um, and I had to say, um, "Kini de mana mana, kini de mana mana, Pepsodent mombre Indonesia," which uh, it's quite impressive, isn't it? You don't know what it means, that it is. <laughs> <laughs> it means uh, Pepsodent is putting a smile on the face of Indonesia, but I had to keep doing retakes because I kept saying um, Pepsodent mimbre, which apparently means something completely different. What? It means Pepsodent's putting a smile on the bum of Indonesia. <laughs> so, uh, you've got to be careful with yeah. your, your pronunciation, you see. Yes. At one stage, a lot of American ads were coming here because they didn't want to remake them for the British. And still are. Still quite a lot made. Have you done one? Yes, I, I, I revoice quite a lot of American stuff, and I'm quite good at it now, and uh, it is quite hard to do. Mm. Um, it takes, you know, quite a bit of sort of looking at all the time codes underneath. But when... Do you remember the Odor Eater adverts? Odor Eaters. Those? Yeah, Odor oh. Eaters. Well, they were, they were really weird adverts because um, they were voiced by me. <laughs> no, <laughs> I remember doing one quite badly, and so you saw this woman saying... Um, and her voice was out of sync with me, and so it went out sort of, uh-oh. He's not wearing his older readers. <laughs> and my mouth was still moving, you know, because I hadn't quite got the knack. So you've got to, you've got to be careful when you're dubbing things, yes. Yes, of course you have, particularly if it's foreign language. Uh, or, or 
For example, if you want to use a famous voice, somebody else is you know, doing uh, an impersonation. Well, that's it? a problem because you're not you're not actually allowed to you, to do impressions, um, you know, uh, for commercials. Oh, I suppose not because the the original person wants to get the money to do it if the, if the job's going. Well, it's not that. It's just that I'm not allowed to be um, Victoria Wood in a commercial. I mean, she can be herself. I, I can't do her. I've never seen a... her do a commercial. How would yeah, she sound? She, well, no, she does. She does because she did a, a campaign for coffee and uh, oh yes, you're soap, right. and uh, I, I just I don't think her voice would. Go well on something like Heineken. Refreshes the fight till the base can't reach. Wouldn't quite have that ring. Have, have they ever asked you or coerced you into doing oh, a, yes. a famous voice? Well, I often get asked to do Cilla Black on commercials, and I'm not allowed to do it. Honest Cilla. And um, <laughs> I remember uh, there was a florist uh, company that wanted me to do it, and they wanted me to advertise their beautiful bouquets, their beautiful wreaths, and their beautiful laurels. And of course, what was the the tagline they wanted me to say? We got a Laura Laurels. <laughs> <laughs> but I never did it. There are people who might say that while actors and actresses come off stage with a great deal of fulfilment, that it doesn't take very much artistic integrity to just go and make money doing commercials. But how, how can you say that to me? What? How can you say that to me when you were prepared to take money for this? What? Cue the commercial. And loved by all the stars Life is really marvellous With marvellous Mars Good morning, sir Why, it's Mr Monkhouse Oh, you can call me Bob Or even better, you can even call me after six o'clock You know what I'm here after, don't you? I know, Mr Monkhouse Yeah, you're right I'm after your marvellous Mars bars Two, please Mars and Mars Aren't they, Mr Monkhouse? Marvellous? They're marvellous with a capital mmm. Yes. Mars love Mars. And they all of them agree. Mars is marvellous, just fly one and see. Don't forget, a Mars in the mouth is worth two in the shop. Green with pocket, also two. Mars and marvellous. Oh, what a paradox. Mars and marvellous. Full cream milk pocket. Marvellous. M. Mars. Oh, yes, all right, I am, I am well answered. Yes. Uh, these days, I only eat a third of a Mars bar to help me rest. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Kate Robbins. <laughs> Thank you, Kate. <laughs> Kate, uh, Kate is rushing off now so she can fit in 93 more voiceovers on her way home, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> yes, yes. Now, some ads are seldom seen on TV, like whiskey, cigarettes, puncture kits for inflatable dolls. You hardly see those at all. In fact, with all this political correctness about, I'm surprised they can still sell fairy liquid. <laughs> Some entire shows had to go for the sake of political correctness. For example, the black and white minstrel show. Although, personally, I would never work in blackface unless I wanted to get arrested in Birmingham or acquitted in Los Angeles. <laughs> Ah, you're yeah, my kind of people. So let's make our final clutch of commercials represent the best of the rest and be glad that British commercials bring us some of the best laughs of our ITV evenings. <laughs> these are not my new earrings, you know. <laughs> They're not big enough. <laughs> no, these are bowls. Now, this one's called a wood and it's got bias. My dad says my mum's got bias, you know. Bias, this and bias, that. <laughs> the jokes keep coming out with me. Now, this little white one here, this is called a jack. And when the wood rolls up to it, it says, How are you, Jack? And this one says, I'm all white. <laughs> when the wood bold, somebody says, You'll be better off with an M and B. And out it comes. These boys bowl better on M and B bitter. Good and strong, sparkling bright and clear. And me, I'm for an M&B export. The best pale ale of all. You'd be better off with an M&B. It's marvellous beer.
morning is sleeping for bread, sir, so that every mouth can be paid. Now, the top prize this year is a rolled gold Parker ball pen that writes for miles. Something we all need, eh? <laughs> Well, last year, Ethel got a Parker for her, for her 9,428 tickets, but this year, Johnny Seaton has broken all records, over one million tickets, <laughs> including a car transporter complete with 11 minis towed away. He gets this year's Parker ball pen in etched rolled gold. Uh, where is he? Yes. I'm sorry I'm late. I uh, couldn't find the meter. Oh, I couldn't find... He's on a yellow line. Right. <laughs> now, this one's mine, I thought. is a cigar called Hamlet. A mild cigar. You know, say, I've just, I have just worked out that uh, in the dust on this thumb waiter, that if we had to make this programme from scratch and pay all the stars that we've seen, uh, pay them all the top directors as well and the crews and, uh, and all, all the writers, the best writers in the business and the costumes and the sets and the music, it would have cost over three million pounds. If we do another show like this, I'm working on percentage, you know. <laughs> Little Jack Horner sat in the corner, playing with his thumb waiter. He put in his thumb and said, this is dumb. Someone pick that up later. <laughs> wow. Good night. <laughs> The race is on, and the competition's fierce. You're losing your touch, Ellington. Too much on your plate. Sign my T-shirt, then. Come here. Call me Brendan. Get the motor. We're going racing. Mum? He's just joined the firm. And uh, both still friends after all these years. How would you know about longevity where relationships are concerned? Ellington, Thursday at 9 on Central. There's been a murder. She might like to know there's a psycho in the neighbourhood. Who is this? London Bridge, gripping new drama beginning Thursday at 10.40 on Central. I have a compound, Miss Brownwood, that goes through the body seeking out the colour of bacillus. A close working relationship? Very close. Bramwell is next on Central. Put the money in the bag. I remember it like it was yesterday, June 22nd, 1933. I was right across the street. The whole town was talking about the robbery for weeks. People often ask me how handsome Clyde was or if Bonnie was as pretty as they say. I only had eyes for those cakes in the baker's window. Antin Men's Cakes, a slice of America. I'd promised him a look at the old country. It was never going to be easy. It was either too quiet, or when we found some life. You enjoy yourself, don't mind me.
never again, I told myself. But then... We could do France next time. Well, he always said it was better to travel than to arrive. The Virgo man is neat, methodical, a perfectionist, mm -hmm. critical of everyone else. No. no. He hates being criticised himself. However, he's immensely practical. Uh, yeah. If there's one thing a Virgo demands, it's punctuality. I don't mind you being late. You know, this is all rubbish. Shame, says Virgos make great lovers. Really? and see how you feel. How do you feel about it? Good. You feel good. I knew that I would. Kellogg's All Brand Cereal. Try it for two weeks. Love it forever. You could win one of 50,000 Utterly Yellow instant prizes when you open the first birthday card inside special tubs of some I will utterly butterly. Have you gone utterly butterly? I think it's brilliant. I really, really do. I think it's wonderful. On Morrison's Market Street, you'll find more fresh food shops than any other superstore, with quality food freshly prepared in-store every day. And right now at the Greengrocers, a family bag of Cape Golden Delicious Apples is only 29 pence per pound. It's the best of both worlds, friendly personal service and Morrison's famous value. So take a walk down the Market Street and take a fresh look at Morrison's. Remember last summer? Yes, no, please, thanks to Program. They let us ride in the car, watch TV. We even went camping. Henry, Molly, time for your flea control. Flea control now? We don't even have fleas. Here, Henry. Molly. Don't wait till they start scratching. Use Program one dose once a month with their food to stop fleas breeding. It's that simple. Now this summer... We'll maybe go sailing. Use Program now, the easy and convenient flea control. Available only on prescription from your vet. You've been drinking. Leave me alone. We've got a possible fatal. Looks like a stabbing. We didn't see what happened. Was anyone else with you this evening? Why didn't you call the police? Why are you and your husband both trying to hide the fact that Linda was there? Unanswered questions in the Tuesday Bill at 8 on Central. Now on Central, the hotly passionate Bramwell. <laughs> <laughs> 